Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 28 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Last episode, we got an awesome little enchanting room going, which is actually working pretty well for us. I managed to get this really nice bow with power 5, infinity 1, and I've been out hunting for it for the last couple nights, and let me tell you guys, it's done a really nice job. Uh, I've been killing things left and right, managed to get myself a few more ender pearls and a couple other things, obviously lots of other mob drops, um, but basically, I mean... It's doing a good job. That's all I can really say about it. Uh, as you can see, we've got a ton of resources coming in, courtesy of our uh, mining system that we set up a couple episodes back. Everything seems to be running pretty well. And uh, this episode, well, I think I'd like to start on Thaumcraft. Uh, Thaumcraft is a magic-based mod, and it's a very well-known mod. Uh, anybody who hasn't really messed with Thaumcraft, uh, definitely recommending that you guys play with it a bit. It's a lot of fun. It does require a little bit of effort to get involved, but once you do it, it's well worth the effort. So uh, I've kind of cleared out a space over out here that I'm thinking might be my Thaumcraft room. I haven't entirely decided how I want it laid out, but I'm sure I'll come up with something cool. So I'm probably not going to want any of these sugarcane hanging out anymore. I'm going to actually fill in this area just a little bit. Yeah, this might not be a terrible idea. So, Thaumcraft is going to give us access to a lot of magical items and abilities, all of which should help us, uh, you know, adventure through the world and do all kinds of neat things. So, I'm going to get started prepping for my Thaumcraft area. I think like I have done in the last couple times I've built stuff, this episode will be dedicated to getting the foundation of Thaumcraft, and then maybe next episode or the one after that, I haven't decided whenever it comes around is a good time, I'll probably start building a Thaumcraft room or dungeon or, or place to call home so we've got our blood magic area here that's you know doing its thing and there's a lot of mobs in there i should probably dispose of but um yeah when we get done with our thaumcraft area hopefully it'll be a nice building and you guys will like it but this episode we're going to focus on getting started with thaumcraft so what do we need one of the th First things we're going to need to get started with Thaumcraft is a wand. So there's a, there's basically two things we're going to need to get started here. Let's get ourselves, oh good, I got some sugar cane. That should be enough. And we're going to want a couple pieces of leather. And we should have some wood on us, so that's good. The other thing we're going to need is a bit of iron. So your most basic and simple wand is going to require a stick with some wand caps on it. And wand caps are luckily pretty easy to make. It's simply like that. These are your basic iron wand caps. They're kind of terrible, but because it's the very beginning basic wand, there's really nothing else we can get. So we're going to start with that. The other thing we're going to need to get started with Thaumcraft is just a little bit of uh, paper, turn it into books, make it into a bookshelf, and this bookshelf is going to get us access to the how-to guide for Thaumcraft. Simply right-click on the bookshelf with the wand, ta-da, and you've got yourself a Thaumonomicon. This is your guide to all things Thaumcraft. There is a lot in here. Uh, some things are not available to even be seen first off. So for example, there's a bunch of other stuff available in the Thaumaturgy section that you don't see until you unlock other things. You're going to need to do some in-game research to figure out the different mechanics and different items and different blocks that you can make, but they're all very cool and very useful. So for example, a hungry chest is available here. We wouldn't be able to craft this until we've done the research that allows us to understand how the hungry chest works, and then we can go ahead and start crafting it. There's also also some add-ons like Thaumic Tinkerer and uh, Thaumic Exploration that add uh, a couple things here. So you'll see that there's a couple tabs here that are added by some um, other mods. Okay, so overall, this is the beginning. And there's a couple basic things that it can tell us about. There's uh, plants and trees, some magical related plants and trees that are world gen, uh, different ores that are available, ores and ore nodes, aspects of magic, the Thaumonomicon, knowledge fragments, research, all this cool stuff that I'm going to be explaining to you. And then there's warp, flux, and all things bad. Uh, don't worry though, if you aren't a fan of reading, I'll be explaining to you how all this cool stuff works over this episode. So in order to start unlocking the magics of Thaumcraft, we're going to need two more items. Uh, we're going to need 
a thermometer. This guy is going to give you access to the magical world and it's kind of a looking glass into the world of magic. So we're going to need some gold and we're going to need some glass, which I may or may not have some of. I think I can turn quite clear glass into regular old glass. And then I'm going to dip into my magic chest and grab any two of these shards. It doesn't matter which ones I use. It can be the same two. It can be two different ones, whatever. Uh, air seems to be one that I have a lot of, so I'm going to go ahead and use those. And ta-da, we've got our thermometer. Neat. This is going to give us two basic functions. One, it's going to allow us to see some of the hidden things available in Thalmcraft, and two, it's going to allow us to scan blocks and learn information about them so that we can use the information that we learn for researching purposes. Cool? So that's going to be uh, our first step. So in order to use this thing, what we need to do is go out into the world and find something that we can scan. Uh, something easy to scan early on is water. Simply hold right click and you get aqua. So we just discovered one of the many aspects of magic that are available in Thomcraft, and you can see them listed in the aspects of magic book. Okay, so the primal aspects, which are air, water, fire, order, chaos, and terra. And they all have different, you know, earth is uh, terra, different names. So terra, perdito, um, ordo, ignis, aqua, and air. These are the different basic aspects of magic. And then there's other aspects that can make it up. Now, in order to discover the other aspects, you need to know the building blocks of those two aspects. Most other aspects are made up of um, a combination of primals or a combination of the other kinds of aspects. And we'll see some of those in just a minute. So for example, if I tried to scan sand here, it's going to tell me that I just discovered Perdito and Terra. Nice. And I'm gaining research points for it. If I want to scan grass, it tells me that to understand this study, and you can see it on the bottom right of my screen, you need to study the sources of life. So it's giving me a little hint about what I should study before I can figure out uh, the thing that I'm trying to scan. I need to understand plants for this. And there's a couple other things, obviously, right? So lots of different research that we can do. If I want to scan this chest, sometimes, by the way, hold shift to scan it. Um, so we're going to go around and start scanning different blocks. And I'll show you a couple of the basic ones that you're probably going to want to scan just to get started. Um, probably, I think one of the good ones is coal, maybe charcoal, some redstone. And a good hint for this, take off your ring of magnetization if you have one. Okay, So I'm going to scan redstone. And, oh, can't scan that one just yet. So let's try coal. I think I should be able to scan coal. Yes. Cool. I just discovered a new type of aspect, and you can see it on the right-hand corner of my screen. You've discovered potentia. Potentia is a new kind of aspect. It's not a primal aspect because it's made up of two primal aspects. It's ordo and ignis. So when you combine these two aspects of magic, you get the potentia aspect. So I've just discovered that, and now I have the ability to scan things and learn about anything that has potentia in it. And charcoal should be similar. Yep also had Potentia and Ignis on it. So most things in the world have one or two aspects. You can hold shift over anything that you've so far scanned and see what aspects of magic comprise that item. Pretty cool, right? Can I scan a wand yet? Probably not. Nope, we need to study crystals. By the way, uh, probably a good starting point if you do want to do a little bit of scanning. Scan each of the um, crystals, hopefully, maybe not actually. I, I think it might be changed now. I might not be able to scan these just yet. Nope. So there's obviously a lot of scanning we're going to need to do. So let me go through and show you guys a couple of the good early game things to scan just so you can get your feet wet in the aspects of magic. So let's look at a couple other blocks that we can scan. I should be able to scan a torch early on, and that gives me a new aspect called Lux, which is a combination of, if we look in here, uh, Lux is a combination of air and fire. So all, um, all the combinations are unique, so you'll only ever have like, you know, two items combined always make the same aspect. Uh, we should maybe be able to scan cobblestone at this point. Let's see. Yes, and that got me Perdito and Terra. Um, let's see, I think another good one to scan at this point might be a bowl. That's usually a good one to get early on. And if you look online, you can find a couple things. So a bowl held, helped me to discover Vacuous. That's cool. So Vacuous is um, 
the the empty component of the bowl is what had it have a uh, vacuous so i'm going to do a little bit of scanning off camera at this point um i'll go through and just scan a few things and then we'll jump into uh you know what actually i think i might want to jump into a research table right now so let's get that going yeah that's probably not a bad idea and once you've uh started and unlocked most of the aspects it's a lot easier to scan but let's get a research table going so in order to do that we're going to actually just need a table uh thomcraft has a block called a table which is not easy to search for in NEI because there's a lot of mods that have the word table in their items, but it's really easy. It's just uh, some wood and some wood slabs, okay? So let's get some of that. And because I'm gonna, I'm gonna make uh, two of these. Yeah, that should be good. There we go. We get ourselves two tables. Now the other thing we're going to need um, are uh, an item that allows us to do a little bit of research. And I think I need a feather and probably an ink sack and probably a bit of glass. And if we combine these guys, we're going to make a glass bottle a feather and an ink sack, we get scribing tools. Cool. So the scribing tools are what allow us to do a bit of research. So in order to make our table, and I'm going to put it in here for now until I get to the point where I have a room dedicated to uh, Thongcraft, simply place them down and right click on the two tables next to each other with your scribing tools to get your research table. So this is where we can do research about aspects and about research objects in the Thaumonomicon. Cool. So within here, we're going to want to go ahead and do a bit of research. So maybe the first thing I'm going to want to research is research expertise. In order to do this, we're going to need some paper and you're going to want a good handy bit of paper uh, nearby. So let's grab, you know, a few pages that should suffice for now. And you're going to want those scribing tools in your hand in order to do your research. So all you have to do is hold uh, the scribing tools in your inventory somewhere and a piece of paper and click on the research that you want to do. So in this case, I want to do research expertise. So we click on that and we should now have an item. It used up a piece of paper and it used some of the durability of the scribing tools, which can be refilled in a crafting table with an ink sack. So don't worry about that. And you get your research notes for research expertise. Simply place that in the top slot and you're going to want to make sure you have some ink up there. If you don't, it's going to tell you you've run out of ink. So we can see research expertise requires uh, some ordo, but it also requires a couple aspects we haven't really figured out yet. Um, now, some aspects are really easy to find in the world, other ones not so much. Uh, what I'm going to recommend you do in order to help you out is combine water and earth. And you can do this in the research table, and that'll help you discover a new research called Victus. Cool. So that's a new aspect that we have. I'm going to go around and just scan a few more items. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get the stuff that we need to scan in order to get things going. So let's see. Uh, I should maybe be able to scan grass at this point. Nope, I have to study plant. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I do. Cool. I got herba. Nice. Um, I might be able to scan seeds by now. Hooray, it has more herb on it. So a chest, I can study a chest, and I discovered arbor, which is, uh, you know, obviously related to wood. Can I scan this redstone at this point? Nope, study things that move. All right, something that move is probably a trap door. Nice, that has modus on it. So that is a new aspect that I discovered. So now can I scan redstone? I have to study tools, all right. Do I have... I'm going to make a quick pick. That might count as a tool. Ah, I need to study man, so humanus. I know that a good source of that is zombie flesh. I have to study beast. Okay, well, let's try some beef. Ha, the nature of death. All right. Uh, I know that the nature of death is simply a combination of life and perdito. So that taught us mortis. So now can I scan beef? Oh, that still counts as beast. All right. I'm not sure which of these might have the beast aspect on them. It might be any of these. If not, I can go out and find like, you can actually scan an animal. That should work too. All right, let's do this. I see a sheep in the distance. Ta-da! I found Beastia. Nice. 
So now that I've scanned uh, a beast, I should have the ability to scan a few more things. So this is basically how you figure out this mini game, if you will, of how to scan different things. So at this point, I should be able to scan my zombie flesh, which I probably put away because I'm a dire derp. Ah, study the mind. Okay, I know a source of mind. I think actually paper. Wow, really not making it easy on me, are you guys? Spirits is a combination of death and prodito? No, death and life, I think. Life and death should give me spiritus. I think soul sand is also a source of that too. So if you want, you can just scan soul sand. There we go, I've got mind. So now I should be able to get humanus, nice. And now I should be able to get, there we go, cool. And I'm gonna try a shovel too while I'm at it. We drop the shovel down and scan it. There we go, that's cool. Can I scan a crafting station at this point? Not bad. And now I should maybe be able to scan all kinds of cool things. So as you can see, I'm unlocking more and more. Thaumonomicon might be a good thing to scan. Oh yeah, look at that, lots of points there. Just discovered um, the magic aspect. Pretty cool, right? So obviously lots of things that I can scan. At this point, redstone yet? All right, got redstone. So let's see if now that I've discovered a bunch of different aspects, right? So we go into our aspects of magic, we can see we've discovered a lot of different aspects. And every time you scan a block with aspects in it, you'll get aspect points in the table here. So you can see uh, the mind one is one of the ones I needed to figure out this research expertise. Cool. Uh, let's see if I can figure out what else might be involved. All right, so after doing a little bit of research, it turns out census is the third aspect that we want to get to. Now, for one time only, I'm going to show you guys how research works, and then going forward, most research will be done off camera. But because a lot of people are probably new to the series and don't understand how research works, I want to explain it to you. So remember we saw earlier that all aspects of magic are, except for the primals, made up of others uh, of themselves. So for example, one of the aspects of magic in here is cognito, which is the brain, okay? Mind, memory, cognition. It's an aspect of magic related to thinking, let's say. So cognito is made up of two aspects, terra, which is a primal aspect, remember, and spiritus. Now we can also remember that spiritus is made up of two aspects, and spiritus aspects are, I believe it's life and death, right? Victus and mortis, life and death. And then Victus is made up of two aspects, right? So every aspect is usually made up of any, and eventually you can whittle your way down to one of the primals if you keep breaking them down into their component aspects. So what we want to do in order to do research is understand the uh, fundamentals of uh, the brain and the uh, ordo, for example. So let's take a look at uh, what we've got here for uh, Cognito, right? So Cognito, Terra and Spiritus. Uh, spiritus and mortis, right? So mortis is life and death. Life is made up of uh, everything there that we saw. So let's also look at uh, census, which is the blue one there that looked like an owl. So that's made up of air and spiritus. Cool. Uh, so one thing we want to try and work towards is some kind of way to get these linked. So for example, I know permutatio is made up of perdito and ordo. And I know that um, cognito, right, is made up of terra and spirit, and spirit is made up of life and death. And death has perdito in it. Mortis has perdito in it. Where's mortis? There it is, it has perdito in it. So what we wanna do is click and drag from this side on the left, all these research points that we've learned by scanning things and connect the dots from one aspect to the next. So for example, the only things we can link to um, Cognito here are the things that make up Cognito or the things that Cognito makes up. So for example, Cognito is made up of, um, as we saw, Terra and Spiritus. So I'm gonna link Spiritus here and I'll explain why in a minute. So Spiritus links here, and you'll see that there's a line between it. If we try and link something um, that doesn't connect, so for example, Ordo, or I'm going to go with Metallum, because I know I'm not really going to need that. See how Metallum is kind of grayed out, and there's no line connecting it? That's because Metallum does not make up Cognito, and Cognito you know, can't combine with anything else to make Metallum. So what we want to do is get these lines connected all the way up to Ordo. So Spiritus is made up of life and death, right? 
So if I add the mortise aspect here, it'll connect and you'll see the line there. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of see it behind it and it's not grayed out. Now mortise or death is made up of life and perdito, right? If we come in here and look, mortise is made up of life and perdito. And if we add, um, you know, perdito here, we've now got these connected. But note that perdito is not connected to ordo because these are two primals. So if we were able to find something that makes up uh, or is made up of perdito and ordo, that would be great. That's why just a minute ago I showed you guys uh, permutatio, which is made up of perdito and ordo. So if I throw permutatio down here, you'll see that now we've connected the brain and there's a line going all the way up to ordo. Now all I have to do is somehow hook up to census. So let's see what census is made up of. Census is made up of air and spiritus. Oh, well that's lucky because we've already had something that's made up of spiritus, right? So if we throw down uh, an air aspect here, for example, that'll add a connection. And then if we throw down spiritus, Oh, no, nope, my bad. That should have been, let's see, if I right click, I can take that off. Uh, we can throw down, I think, is there anything that's made up of Perdito and Air? I think there is, but I don't know if I have it yet. Air and Order is Modus, so that's cool. So what I could do is say maybe Modus here for Air and Ordo. these guys, and then I'll put an ordo in between them. So we're going ordo to modus to ordo to modus to air to census. And eventually we've connected the line so that all three of the pieces that were there originally are there now connected, and we get our research expertise. All I have to do is take this item, and you'll notice right now I have the research note in my inventory. Uh, I'm missing required research for some of these. When I right click on this guy, I've completed the research and now research expertise is open to me. Um, so there's a couple benefits we get to research by doing this. Uh, we've become more effective at it. Uh, when we remove an aspect that you placed in an area here, there's a 25% chance that you'll regain it. And you're also able to see what aspects you need to combine to create an aspect you're hovering over. So if you were thinking, wow, this is going to be a huge pain because I have to constantly reflect and research and look in here to find the different aspects. Well, now, because we completed the first research expertise, anytime we mouse over an aspect in the table, we can see its component aspects, which makes it a lot easier for us to figure out. So that's why I always recommend just grab that research expertise the first thing you do. Cool? So just so we can see what it's like now that we know that how the table works, let's do one more research. And one of the ones I want to get early on also is NITOR. So I need um, scribing tools and paper to get it. Remember, anything that's flashing you can access now. Anything that's grayed out has some kind of requirement. And anything that's not flashing you already have access to. So we already know how to do basic alchemy. Uh, it comes with things. And there's a couple different... Um, notes within each tab that you want to read about so you can figure out what's involved with it. But uh, because I've uh, played with Thalmcraft a lot, I kind of know it off the top of my head, so I don't have to worry too much about reading it. But if you're new to Thalmcraft, definitely recommend you reading some of it. There's some really good information in here about how different blocks and mechanics work. For now, I'm going to go ahead and get the research for Nitor. So now it should be a lot easier to do my research. Go ahead and put my research notes in there. Go ahead and put my scribing tools in there. And we find that we have to find a way to connect uh, the light aspect Lux with fire. Well, look at that. If we mouse over Lux, we discover that Lux is already made up of air and fire. So that makes things pretty easy. What we want to consider now is how many of each aspect we have. We've got five points of Lux in our table, and we've got 15 of air and 20 of fire. So let's go ahead and move some aspects in. If we just click and drag it over here, we'll notice that each time we place an aspect in the table, it's using up an aspect point. We get more by scanning objects in the world that are composed of air. So every time we scanned something, we got some research points for it. And that's what the information on the bottom right was telling you. So for example, if I scan this research table, we'll notice that I just got more Arbor, Cognito, and um, Instrumentum. So if you go ahead and look a few seconds back in the video, you'll see that I got just gained those research points, right? So a quick way to get this is just make a chain, right? So we'll do, um, we'll put Lux here, we'll put a fire here, and then we can put anything that's composed of fire, Lux is just fine, boom. So nice and easy connection to get Nitor. Cool. Ta-da! Research completed. Now I know how to make Nitor, which requires a crucible. Let's make one. Uh, crucibles are pretty cool and easy to make. Uh, what we're going to need is the following. 
seven iron ingots. Uh, I think I'm also going to need one more. I had a little mishap. A creeper blew up my wall. I was reconfiguring my trash can, and it dumped out my entire miscellaneous junk chest. Whoops. So I probably don't have a uh, flint and tinder anymore. And one more thing I'll probably want just temporarily is netherrack. So let's get some of that. And to make a crucible is really quite easy. We simply need a cauldron. Place the cauldron on the ground and right click it with any wand. And what you'll find is it turns into a thongcraft crucible. Hooray! Uh, you're going to need to supply some fire to this guy, so that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and place um, some nether rack underneath and light it on fire, which should be easy enough. And I'm probably going to have to, you know, jump down here to get my blocks. And then the only other thing we need is some water. So we're going to definitely want to have a source of water out um, wherever we build our new Thaumcraft area. So I'm not sure if I have any buckets laying around. Might have had some. Nope. Probably were in my miscellaneous junk chest that basically got wiped out because of dire derps. Sleeping through the night. And just going to snag a bit of water. So doing any work with the crucible is pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you now. First, put some water in there, make sure you've got a heat source under it, and eventually you'll see the crucible start to bubble. That means it's ready to operate. In order for this to work, we're going to want to look at how to make nitor, and you'll know it because it tells you it's a crucible recipe and it has a little picture of the crucible in here. What you need to do in order to use the crucible is figure out how to find three ignis, three lux, and three potentia from any items in the world. So anything that has potentia and ignis and, and lux in it would be fine. And uh, you're also going to need one piece of glowstone dust per nitor. Okay, so let's see how we can figure that out. First, we could go looking through items and just holding shift over it, and anything that we've scanned so far should tell me what aspects are composed of it. But luckily, there's a better way. When you go into your aspects of magic, we can go ahead and mouse over whatever aspect we're looking at, and it'll give us pictures of items that have that aspect, and the number under it tells you how many aspect points are in there. So for example, coal and charcoal each have two fire in them. Neat. And we're also going to need uh, some potentia, which you can also find in charcoal and coal. So that's really neat. Uh, if we want lux, we can find it in torches and glowstone. Cool. And you'll notice you get one lux from a torch and two lux from glowstone. So what we want is a total of three ignis, three lux, and three potentia, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go grab some coal. Okay, and I'm going to grab some glowstone while I'm at it. So if we wanted to get three ignis and three potentia, we would need two coal, right? But that's going to have an extra, you know, one of each because we're going to wind up with four in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two sets of nitor. So with um, three charcoal or three coal, we're going to have a total of six potentia and six ignis, which will give us two nitor right and for lux we're going to need six lux aspects we get one each per torch so i'm going to want six torches cool and since we're going to wind up with two nitor we're going to need two glowstone dust because it's one glowstone dust per nitor all you have to do is drop the items into here and you're going to want to be a little bit quick about this when i drop my coal in and you can look at this with your thermometer oh maybe not well, you're just going to have to take my word for it. We're going to drop these things in here and then drop your glowstone. And ta-da! It went ahead and created Nitor. Now, there is a way to see what aspects are inside the Crucible. We just don't have access to it yet. Um, but we'll check it out pretty soon. So I just made Nitor. Hooray! Nitor is a cool substance. Uh, you can use it for some crafting recipes in Thalmcraft. You can also place it on the wall as a light source if you want. So if you want to make a nifty looking magical light source, just place it on the wall. And that's Nitor. And it's giving off light, so it'll be bright in here at nighttime. Cool. You can drop it off the wall. One other very useful piece is that you can use it in uh, underneath your crucible as a heat source. So no longer do we need that boring nether rack and flame. We can go ahead and just do like that and we should have straight up access to things and that just looks a little bit better from underneath, right? So no more nether rack, no more fire. We have uh, a heat source of nitor underneath our crucible. There's other good uses for nitor that we'll get into. Uh, you'll definitely be seeing those in the future. The next research I want to get that should help us out 
our goggles are revealing. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and research this off camera, and then I'll come back in a minute to show you how I made out. Oh, there's an unknown research here. Huh, I have to figure out what that is. So here's the completed research for the goggles of revealing. We need to orum, which is made up of uh, magic and air. So you can see I linked air here. And remember, census was made up of air as well. So I put the two airs down and connected them with the lux symbol, because lux is usually pretty easy to come by. Uh, magic has vacuous in it. Vacuous has air in it. And then I just connected the two air symbols here with the lux in the middle as well. That gave us goggles of revealing. Nice. So this is going to be a very useful tool for us. However, it's going to require an arcane workbench. Uh, let's take a look at how we get an arcane workbench. It's really easy. Just right click on a table with a uh, wand. So let's take a look. We're going to go ahead and make an arcane workbench very briefly. And an arcane workbench functions almost identically to a, um, let's see, not you. Well, yeah, I can scan the table. Sure, why not? I might as well scan the crucible while I'm at it, too. Scan all the things. Trust me, it helps. Um, more things you scan, the more research points you have, the better. So just right click here and you get this nifty crafting table. It's really easy to use. It works just like a vanilla crafting table. However, you need to have a wand in there and the wand needs to be charged with some magical power. So how do we charge this? Well, if you notice on the top left of your screen, you've got this nifty little indicator of how much magical charge there is in this wand. Right now, there's nothing. There is actually six things that we can put in, one for each of the aspects of magic. Uh, so air, Perdito, Ordo, Terra, all six of those have their own aspects. And the only way to charge them is with an aura node. Now, if you go out looking in the world, you might find these objects. They're very, very hard to see. There's actually one right there. If you look right where my mouse cursor is, there's this really hard to see little blob. Luckily, it's easier to see, ta-da, with your thermometer. So remember I told you the thermometer would give you access to see things? Now, if you want, and I recommend it, uh, scan every aura node you find, because you'll most often find uh, some primal aspects in there, and you'll get some research points for it. So this aura node actually has some physical, magical stuff that you can actually absorb into your wand, and it's really easy to do. Uh, simply hold your wand towards the node and hold right click, and you'll notice that it's sucking in some of the magical energy. And if you look at the top left of my screen, my aura node, uh, or my wand charging meters are filling up with, you guessed it, Ignis and Perdito. So we can go ahead and scan this thing or look at it. We can see how much we have left. The only tip I'll give you is don't completely empty the node of its points. Now I just happened to check and I'm pretty sure that shouldn't be a problem for me, right? Uh, so we've got three fire and 15 Perdito in there. There's actually a research you can get later on that'll prevent you from accidentally emptying it. But until you do that research, just be careful. Don't empty a node of all of its aspects because um, these nodes will slowly regenerate over time and you'll be able to uh, use them uh, to continually charge your wands all the time. But if you completely drain of an aspect, for example, if I completely eliminated all the Ignis in here, it would have wound up uh, possibly not regenerating. Now the difficult part about this is that I have to run around holding up this thermometer and look for some other aura nodes. And I think I might see one in the distance, either that or it's a flower. It's also a little bit easier to see these guys at night because they do give off a small amount of light. So I'm just going to run around here, uh, hopefully find another aura node with some different aspects in it. And I'll come back in a minute uh, after I'm maybe even scanning some stuff because scanning is good. And we'll see what we can find. Oh, is that a chicken and an egg? Nice. One place I know that we'll find an uh, aura node, by the way, is in here. Remember we uh, went through this Thawncraft dungeon a couple episodes back? They almost always have an aura node in the middle, and you can see there's lots of stuff in there. So Perdito, Terra, and Ordo. I'm just going to charge it up a little bit so we get some Ordo. I want to be careful, though, not to empty out the Ordo that's in there. There we go, get some Terra, that's cool. I probably emptied the Ordo by mistake, but like I said, it's not guaranteed to be lost. All right, there's one Terra left, I'll leave it. The Ordo might regenerate, it might not. Hopefully it does. Let me just look around for any more nodes. Oh, hey, here's one, just found it. Uh, we're going to see that that has Terra and Ordo in it as well. So I guess I'll go ahead and fill up what's left in my wand here. Now, uh, the other thing I'm gonna recommend you do is if you have a map mod installed, like I do with uh, this map here, I'm gonna go ahead and add, and I'm gonna mark what it is. So it was Terra Ordo, right? Was that what it was? Um, so you can remember what's in the nodes. Uh, Terra Perdito Ordo, actually. So Terra Perdito Ordo. And uh, I'm gonna set enabled to off. 
So that way it doesn't actually have that beam coming down the sky, but it's still listed in my waypoints list. You can see I've also done it for my home and my quarry. So the beams aren't showing up, but I can still actually find it when I want to. Cool. All right, just a few more nodes to find because I need a few more aspects of magic. I need to find something with water and I need something with air. I should note that different biomes have different chances of having different types of things in them. This one definitely looks like, oh wow, it has water and air in it. Perfect. And they're both over 25, so I don't have to worry about emptying it. Your basic wand can only hold 25 of each of these aspects. So now that I've got this thing set up, let's head back to our base and see how to craft using it. So I've gone ahead and prepared two more thermometers. It's hard to scan a thermometer with a thermometer, so go ahead and take this opportunity to scan it, just so you have it. So I've got two more thermometers. Let's look at the recipe. Unfortunately, NEI doesn't have a plug-in, I don't think, for this, but you can see the recipes in the book here. It's going to require five of each of the elemental aspects and three per detail in order. So I've got 25 of each of my wands, so I've got plenty to do this recipe. Uh, so I just need to place this in the following order in the crafting table. So I actually got the opposite of what I need in terms of leather and gold, but that's okay. I got four gold and two leather instead of four leather and two gold, but oh well. Dire derps abound this episode. And then the two thermometers. Hooray! You're going to notice that all the different aspects around here are flashing, indicating that they're missing. We don't have them. When I place my wand in the table, hooray, we've got it. Now, unfortunately, it did say we needed 5 and 3, but we have 5.5 and 3.3. That's because the basic wand is really inefficient. Uh, we're going to want a better wand, which we'll get to at some point, and that will make this cost actually drop to a stable value of 5 and 3, and even a more advanced wands can do less. It'll cost like 4 and 2 or something like that. So now we can go ahead and pull out the goggles of revealing. Hooray! Which, by the way, inherently give us a little discount. So whenever I'm wearing my goggles of revealing, number one, I get a discount on any points or work that I doing here of five percent so it saves on things a little bit and number two i should be able to see aura nodes without holding up my thermometer so check this out you can see the aura node and without holding it up you can still see it nice we can see what aspects are inside of it of course if i take them off it's hidden again if i put them back on it's shown again and there's several mods that have gone ahead and integrated so that you can add goggles of revealing to their armor and such we'll definitely be checking those out at some point uh down the line but today's episode i think we've accomplished quite a bit uh we've got the goggles of revealing we've got basics of Thomcraft research and stuff. Now, like I said, pretty much all research going forward will be done off camera. It's the exact same function that you just saw. It's just a little puzzle slash mini game. Um, one other thing I'll note is that some uh, researches can be straight up purchased for research points instead of having to do the table, which is kind of nice. Uh, it's usually like the easier ones. So I'm gonna just see if there's, there's one, right? Enchanted fabric. Just says uh, three Pano and three uh, Percantio. So if we look in here, I've got um, eight and nine. So I have enough. They would be flashing if you didn't. All I have to do is click on it and research completed. So no research in the table. Just shows me how to make enchanted fabric, which is a pretty easy thing to make. And now I've got that completed. So some need um, like the arcane lamp here. Uh, you need aspects to purchase it and some do not. And that's a little bit of a long episode, but I think it was well worth it. So those of you who are not terribly familiar with Thalmcraft should have a pretty good understanding of how things work now. And those of you who are familiar with it, well, hopefully you learned something. Uh, we'll be back next time to hopefully build a nifty looking building here um, and maybe some other cool stuff. So for now, Daryl20 signing off. Uh, hopefully I will be having some good Thalmcraft gadgets pretty soon because trust me when I tell you these Thalmcraft items are very cool and useful and uh, give you access to lots of neat abilities that are pretty hard to find in any other mod. All right, guys, take it easy.